So I know you had three days off from school, so your brains might not be fully back up to speed today, but I've got a little quiz for you. So we have two sacraments in the church that are called sacraments of healing. Does anybody want to try and take a guess at what those are? Yeah, Ellen? What's that? Anointing of the sick, that's right, that's one of them. There's one more, but it's a sacrament of healing. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. Confession, awesome, good job. So two sacraments of healing, confession and anointing of the sick. And for different purposes, but anointing of the sick is both physical and spiritual, and confession is also both physical and spiritual. Sometimes sin shows up in our bodies as well. But there's parts of confession, and you know, confession sometimes is called by a bunch of different names. Sometimes it's called the sacrament of reconciliation. Sometimes it's called confession. Sometimes it's called penance. But it's because it has those different parts, and so sometimes we talk about it with those different parts. And so I wanna go some, through some of the parts today. So the first one is confession. So we confess our sins. The second one, is contrition. We have to have contrition. Now, contrition just means that we're sorry for our sins, and then we are given a penance, and then the priest prays absolution for us. So I want to just go through those real quick. So first, confession. You know, in order for us to confess our sins, what do we have to do before we go to confession? Yeah, give it a shot. Right, you prepare beforehand. You start thinking through, okay, what am I sorry for? And we call that sorrow contrition. You know, when we think about the things that we've done, when we realize that we might have hurt somebody or done something wrong, we feel bad. And there's two kinds of sorrow. One is shame and one is guilt. Now, shame is not from God. Shame is the message that says, you are a bad person. That's shame, that's the voice of the devil. Guilt says you did a bad thing and you need to do something about it. That's guilt. And guilt, you know, sometimes people say guilt's bad, but guilt actually is supposed to be that thing that motivates us to go to God with our sins. We want to ask God to help us with the things that we know we've done wrong. And so today in our first reading, Jonah goes to the town of Nineveh and he talks about the things that they've been doing wrong. He reminds them of the things that they have done that are not part of God's plan. And they hear him and they have contrition. They have sorrow for their sins and they repent. So they actually do something, they do a penance. Now the penance they did is they put on sackcloth and ashes. Does that sound familiar? Did we do anything with ashes a week ago? What did we do with ashes? Yeah. We put them on our forehead, right? Sounds kind of strange. Why would we put dirt on our foreheads? This is the sleepy side. Why would we put ashes on our forehead? Okay, yep, yeah, because we were fasting on that day. What else? Yeah, give it a shot. Right, the words that were said to us is, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. And that's to remind us that all of us had a beginning and all of us on this earth have an end. And so we want to live our lives with the end in mind. We want to live our lives well. And so to put ashes on our forehead is a sign of our sorrow or our humbling of ourselves in order to change our lives. And then the penance is really supposed to be kind of a cure. You know, if you have a, a cut on your arm, you might put some Neosporin on it and then maybe a Band-Aid. Well, penance is kind of like that Neosporin. It brings healing to the wound of sin and helps those sins to start to heal. So if I've been gossiping about somebody, a penance might be that I actually pray for the people that I know I said things about. That helps bring healing. Or if I was unkind to someone, maybe I can try to reach out to them. That brings healing. Sometimes we can't do something physical, we just do something prayerful. 
So sometimes I know that I've been selfish. And so one of the ways that I can try to grow is to pray that God will help me to be more generous. And so the last part of confession is what's called absolution. And that's where the priest prays over the person who's just finished their confession. And the prayer is really important because sometimes we say, well, why do I have to talk to a priest? Why can't I just talk to God? Absolutely, you can talk to God. But how many of you, if you had the chance to talk to Jesus in person, how many of you would like to do that? Anybody? Me too. In fact, that's what confession does for us. It allows us to tell Jesus our sins, and then through the person of the priest, we actually hear Jesus saying to us from the cross, you are forgiven. And so the priest is the one speaking, but it's really the words of Jesus that are being spoken to us in those prayer of absolution. It's Jesus saying to us individually, you are forgiven. And so the reason why I wanted to talk about confession today is sometimes we think of confession as this difficult thing to do. It's actually a joyful thing. It's a joyful thing because when we recognize our sorrow for sin, we don't have to stay there. Just like the Ninevites, when they heard the message of Jonah, they didn't just go, wow, that's really sad news. They said, let's do something about it. And so they humbled themselves before God, they repented, they confessed their sins, and they received God's pardon. They were freed from their sins. In fact, the town of Nineveh still exists today because it was never destroyed. So for us, I want you to remember, anytime when you start to feel that sadness because of things you've done, know that that sadness is for a reason. The sadness is meant to drive us back to God so that God can heal us from the things that we have done. And so today, I want you just to maybe take a little bit of time and think about some of those things. What are some of the things that maybe you have done or said or not done that you should have? And what do you want God to do for you?